with us now from Capitol Hill, Senate Democratic Whip Dick Durbin. He's chairman of the Senate Appropriations Subcommittee that oversees banks. Senator, good morning. Good morning. Tell us what you want to know. What details, what information uh, do you need in your role at the Senate? I could care less if a person buys a losing ticket at the Kentucky Derby, but when the folks at Chase decide to invest money, they are gambling with taxpayer-insured money. And what it boils down to is when $2 billion are lost, it just isn't a loss for the stockholders or the investors. It's a potential loss for American taxpayers and middle-income families. The obvious question is, why don't we go forward with the Volcker Rule? Let me clear the air here. The Volcker Rule is not in effect and won't be for several weeks, middle of July. The Volcker Rule says that banks shouldn't be engaged in proprietary trading that could, in fact, endanger their capital positions and call for government uh, support, as we had with the last bailout. The Volcker Rule is a sensible step forward for more accountability and more transparency. Senator, would the, would the Volcker Rule have made what happened at J.P. Morgan Chase uh, illegal? I think so, and I'll tell you why I hedge this, is because uh, we're not sure if this was a so-called proprietary trade. In other words, was a bank trading its own money or its clients' money? If it was trading its own money, yes, it would be affected by the Volcker Rule. And what we want in that situation is to limit that exposure. Because if a bank goes south, goes down, we know that ultimately it's the taxpayers, it's middle-income families that end up holding the bag, because we've lived through this movie before. Uh, the president suggested that what happened to J.P. Morgan is exactly the reason you needed reform. Do you say we need more reform or simply need to enforce the reform that's on the books? First, the Republicans in Congress have got to stop their effort to slow down this reform and to starve out the agencies responsible for reform. It, what it boils down to is this. We're writing rules and regulations based on the Dodd-Frank law. The Volcker rule would go into effect at the end of July. And what we've seen in Congress is an effort to shortchange the Securities and Exchange Commission, the Commodities Future Trading Commission, so they don't have the resources and personnel to write these rules and regulations. That isn't fair. Let's do this and do it right so we don't end up in another embarrassing circumstance and need another bailout. Senator, an article in Fortune magazine makes the case that all of this may have come about because of the Federal Reserve and low interest rates and that banks are essentially looking for a way to make money. How do you feel about that? I can tell you that uh, there's no question that banks are in business to be profitable, to make money. What we're trying to stop or slow down is something a former chairman called irrational exuberance. When they're betting $100 billion on credit default swaps, as this whale figure did with Chase. There were others betting against him. They won. He lost. So the question is, is there a profit? Is there an unreasonable level of profit taking that creates too much risk? That's what good managers have to decide every day. Senator, are you convinced, are you convinced that you have enough information to believe that what happened at J.P. Morgan would have, is a violation of the Volcker Rule, that this was in fact proprietary trading? It seems like something that Jamie Dimon said led us to that conclusion, but in all fairness, let's get all the facts out. The regulators are looking at them carefully. Let's find out exactly what occurred, what money was being at risk, what money was being invested in this trade. And, and also, how much of the money that, was, uh, that they have lost uh, in comparison to the size of this institution, uh, is there any evidence that this kind of loss threatened this institution at all? No. As a matter of fact, it, it appears that it does not threaten this institution. But if we tend to stand up and defend the nature of this trade, proprietary trading, think about a smaller capitalized bank, more vulnerable, a financial institution that makes a bet like this and loses and goes under. Who ends up holding the bag? It's the taxpayers. It's middle-income families across America. It isn't just the swashbuckling investors of Wall Street. We end up as a nation and a government holding the bag. We don't want to go through that again. Is there some irony in the fact that the President Obama is talking about banking reform at the same time he's in New York trying to get bankers <laughs> to give money to his re-election effort? Let me tell you, if you want to get started on that subject, I'm in favor of public financing. I think Citizens United uh, decision by the Supreme Court was a travesty. The amount of money that we spent on both sides in this election is going to be uh, not a source of great pride at the end of the day. It is the nature of our system, and it should be changed, that too often politicians go to special interest groups to finance their campaigns. That should come to an end. Senator Durbin, thank you very much.